Marksman, but what this affords for Falcony Sports, the pride of the Burmese, is a very comfortable yet unorthodox lineup. It's very Myanmar. It's very 1-3-1. It's the mm -hmm. first time I've seen this in a while. Yeah, no, uh, honestly, even Malaysia, Indonesia, everybody has got a little bit of taste of this ruby gold lane. And generally, you're just trying to smother your opponent, right? As long as you clear these waves faster, I don't think Lung can win out these trades against the ruby as long as they are minions. And Falcony Sports, what they want to do is uh, play the Predator. They got to be aggressive with a capital A. Looking at the loadouts here, War Cry on Dax's Roger, which I expect to be uh, ahead of uh, Zed's Fredrin. Again, a big head scratcher why the Fredrin came in so early. But then again, we reckon it might be down to comfort. Yeah, I, I think it does come down to comfort. And I think, you know, they still need a brick wall at the end, end of the day, right? Having two brick walls with Godyang uh, on this Edith as well as the Fredrin isn't a bad idea. I think the main issue right now is how does XYG start getting a lead? Because once they start getting ahead and invade the enemy jungle, I think Dax is going to have a much harder time to scale to a relevant state. Which is made possible by Zed and Godyang's rotation. Again, mm -hmm. even through the first uh, wave of buffs, that's what they've been doing. Usually, you see a roamer go with a gold laner, but then again, this long we're talking about, you have to go with the less than favorable matchup. Kel VJ getting a few beads on him by Dax. Godyang very close. Watching out. Something to note, Kel VJ, this is specialty Yu Zhang as well. Mm -hmm. We've seen him do well with this hero all throughout their season while they were playing in the China qualifiers. I mean, right now, they're trying to bait out emotion from the side of Falcon Esports, right? I think Dax has wasted way too much, uh, too much time up on the top side of the map. And in the meantime, on the bottom side, Zed, he's able to get like two camps up on him. Uh-huh. And now he's making the long rotation. That's God Yang still checking in, trying to hit level four. Dax with the pull on the turtle. Not going to commit just yet. Level 4 yet to be reached by our XP laner, Zed. Now wailing away. Yep, uh, this should be a free turtle for the side of XYG. I don't think they're going to contest it at all. And Black Dragon form just to find absolutely nothing here. This is definitely a set play from XYG's side. They're not going to find anything, but still a free neutral is a free neutral. And what this does for XYG is put them up about 500 gold. When are we going to see the rubber band effect from Falcon Esports? Because again, if you guys caught the stream B broadcast of C9 versus Falcon Esports in our opening day, I think they played a very similar tempo. We're just waiting for when. It's not if. Not if they could, but when they will, especially since they want to smother XYG. When are we going to see that, Gideon? When do you think that'll come in? Are we waiting for second turtle, third turtle, maybe even when a Lord comes up? Okay, personally for me, I think that if the momentum, as of right now, there's slight momentum for the side of XYG. If that momentum continues and starts to like 2X itself, second and third turtle might be tough. If you go for the stereotypical way of how Falcons esports usually contest, I would say second turtle, there'll be a bit of recon that needs to be done. And then afterwards, I'm expecting the 12th minute for them to really start to pop off. Man, sounds like a slow takeoff. They got to work on that, maybe spread their wings a little further, because that's what this lineup is made up for. If they're made to be aggressive, and now that we see that they've all reached level four, we know that there's a bloom. Uh, we know that Royal Milk might have his first item. Uh, and I think that's one of the weaknesses that this lineup has since we are seeing Benny on a gold lane ruby. Mm -hmm. Usually Benny is your late game uh, finisher. He's your insurance policy, as we like to call. But now that he's more of a fighter, I don't know if that's going to happen here. XYG looking to capitalize on this early advantage. Four-man rotation down bottom. Kid X sandwiched. Benny just doing his darndest to get some farm in. Yeah, I think at this point, XYG are doing a really uh -oh. good job. I mean, Kid X, he's got flicker, so don't worry. As long as he gets out of the energy eruption, he's totally fine. But just the rotations, right? They're trying to make sure that Dax is on his toes when it comes down to these camp timers. Previously, he ran down to the bottom side to pick up that orange buff. And Zed, he had already rotated to steal one camp, so he already had a rough idea of what that timer was going to be. Grand Theft Orange. Falcony Sports looking like a wet blanket. That's what their lineup is. Again, they're meant to smother. Yep. All this while, Shanyu Gaming is a brick house. They're yeah. just running through you, <laughs> going from objective to objective. Now they're going for their second turtle. And again, it looks like Dax 
He's a baby werewolf, like he can't really do much. Here comes KLVJ. Mm -hmm. It's just not worth it. I think KLVJ can actually go uh, really push the tempo, but I think XYG, as of right now, we're going to take the free neutral. No need to actually put ourselves at risk at this point of time, because if we're talking about leads, Zed already has a lead onto Dax, a full level ahead. KLVJ is doing a pretty good job against Royal Milk so far, but most importantly, Lung is starting to get ahead of Benny. He's two levels up on him. That's right, the international marksman building it up, mewing to Lux Max very soon. I wonder what the items are. Here we go. Let's check in. Uh, 500 gold. Ah, between Zed and Dax. Now a fight down bottom. Okay. We can breathe easy. Um, yeah, an item on uh, Long here. First up, Corrosion Scythe. Yep, he just wants to peel back, right? He knows that it's going to be really difficult to kill Benny at the end of the day. And I, I have to agree with him. It's just not worth the time and effort. You might as well play to scale anyways because your comp is going to be stronger towards the later sections. But even for Falcon Esport, we're not finding these like lane advantages that they can exploit. Uh-oh. Uh -huh. Fight up. Kid X, he's going to get hit by the energy eruption here. They should be able to walk out for free, but PX7 might have something to say about this. But so far, Falcon Esports, I was expecting PX7 to be the main driving force here, but it looks like E1, with the help of Guardian, is making sure that he's stuck in this lane. Look at that. Every single time, three, four people show up to just clear one wave. I, I get it, because again, Falcon Esports, yes, I agree. PX7 should be that initiator, the catalyst to their aggression, but... He just has but one lifeline, Gideon. He just has the Purify <laughs> going up against XYG who has killed VJ for CC. Even Yi Won has CC. Long has CC. God, yeah. They all have CC. I mean, they got to unlock somebody out of their lanes right now because I think they're playing too independently of each other. Like, at least for Kid X, his job is the easiest. Just sit back, don't die, relax, get ready to press your alt when it's necessary. You'll eventually scale to the later stages of the game. But you also have to consider, oh, here we go, the pull. God, Yang. Okay. At half health? All okay, right. that's a non-starter. Okay, I mean, they didn't even get a battle spell, which is kind of unfortunate, but hey, wait a minute. PX7 is getting chunked out in the middle of the turret. Had to use his Purify anyways, and finally a lead for XYGs to get into the mix with Royal Milk taking a brunt off that damage. Now even Godgang coming up with the ult as well. KLVJ finally getting into the mix. Doesn't really get anything off of this. Great vengeance coming in from Royal Milk to stay alive. Looks like a lot of cardio. <laughs> Not much action, really. <laughs> they were jogging in place. Half health on a majority of XYG. First turtle looking great for Falcon. There's the pull. He's already found it. Zed, he's in trouble. Doesn't even get the ult off in time. First blood achieved as Look finally takes the trade onto Bax. But Benny is still too strong in the earlier stages of the game. Able to deal with along by himself. As long as there's members, there are there is plenty of options to sustain. Does he find the kill onto Lung? We cut away, but no. Oh. Lung's still alive at one HP. Oh, Kid X looking to get sneaky. I wonder if he knows. The flicker in the stun and the Basic, he does get in. He does. He's aware. He's aware. And he's even going to help Royal Milk dive kill VJ underneath the turret with mid tier one in the pocket as well. Falcon Esports cracked this game wide open. Swooping down the Burmese bite back. We were looking for it. We were waiting for it. Eight minutes. That's when it snaps. The final turtle seems to be the final straw. I bet all the Burmese watching are all like, come on, they're sweating. Like, when? When? Your <laughs> roster, your lineup is made to be aggressive. And now down bottom. They're going to look for this tier one, right? I mean, that's that's the speed up we expect from Falcon. I was saying 12 minutes because I was expecting uh, uh, Xiangyu Gaming to really take their time with this, right? They could have slowed down that fight, but I think, you know, they got over eager once Lung got into the mix, knowing that he's like a full level ahead oh. of Benny. Now that it's equal, Royal Milk now in some trouble. That Vengeance finally going to time out. Looks like PX7 unable to bail him out of him uh, out of there just then. Yep, I'd say PX7 was maybe three seconds worth of... Uh distance away so it wasn't gonna happen regardless looking at the item game here px7 up by about a thousand away from ye one uh also a huge gap between kel vj and royal milk despite royal milk going down as well a lot of pundits a lot of critics of falcony sports will say royal milk is the weak link royal milk is the achilles heel of falcony sports but now he seems to be one of the anchors he seems to have taken the time to really like say hey guys i'm over here the rest of my team are farming in the other lanes come on over come on over i mean he's an instigator don't get me wrong right i i think that you know if we're talking about the big hitters it's definitely px7 on this pharmacy he definitely has heroes that he really shines on right if there is a uh, bronze silver and gold he's platinum man he's above it all he's platinum faramis he's platinum faramis it's disgusting but 
that's only because Royal Milk is able to kind of initiate and absorb that damage. Exactly. Oh. Those are the words from SD14, and Edward said very low. He's so low. He's going to get hit by the Lycanpots. Even the Retribution saved by the Eternal Guard for to get on out there as they peel backwards to try and make something happen. But a great pull. I'm offended. But wait, hold on. They're turning it around. Long is able to find the pin two times and even gets PX7. It's a 4 for nothing trade in favor of XYG. There's only so much a lone Florin can do. She can heal you. She can get heals in without any detriment. But no, not with the amount of damage that Lone has put out, as well as the counter CC, the initiation by Kel DJ and the rest of XYG. Look at that. Oh, also an aggressive flicker in. Mm -hmm. XYG. They're aware. They know of the dynamics. Who's the beatdown? Exactly, right? Their target priority is pretty good, but also at the same time, Lung had a great eye for opportunity. He found the initial uh, knockback. Actually, it happened twice in that fight. The initial knockback happened here in this part of the map, right in the middle. And then as they, you know, rolled back a bit and then pushed forward again. They're stretching them like dough. Amazing. The back and forth really rocked Falcon Esports there, and that led to XYG being up by about 2,000. And oh, the international marksman doing work, clearing up that top lane. Now, the tier two in mid in jeopardy as well. How do they defend? Falcon Esports is the first time they've actually been on the back foot. I mean, the early game is one thing, but now XYG's knocking down your base. Well, let's see here whether they lose an inhibitor. Benny's going to get hit by the Eternal Guard, but he's fine. He can sustain through all of the damage as long as there are waves. Unfortunately for XYG, they don't have a clear way to initiate without their battle spells, and it doesn't help that their sieging isn't that great without the Black Dragon form. Yep, two minutes until the next turtle comes up. Two and a half thousand gold ahead. Chinese squad are over the Burmese. Look at the damage that Lung is putting down. This Ooh. is dangerous what he's doing. There's a knock up. He's confident. He wants to get more into the mix, but uh, he's kind of slowed down thanks to Royal Milk. Regardless, they still get all the tier two turrets from Falcon Esports. And this is what we were expecting from XYG. When they find the opportunity, they're going to start from your tier ones all the way to your inhibitors. They are thorough. Mm -hmm. They are procedural and Maybe they can work on their precision, but hey, if you're playing with a sledgehammer lineup like this, a uh, comp that just relies on long, I mean, almost single-handedly long, and then maybe a little bit of a E1 on uh, the uh, step back, then yeah, definitely. There's a lot that Falcon Esports need to work on here. I wonder now how they can fight outside the base, because again, the under turret punish is good on Benny, right? It's mm -hmm. perfect. Yep. But when they meet up here in these little, oh, let's, let's check. All right. When they meet up in these little alleyways, these little corridors outside their base, do they have enough firepower? Can they close the gap here? I think, all right. So their firepower is very conditional, right? Their firepower is if they can get XYG to clump up really close together so they get the multiplier. With the bursters. With the bursters, right, from PX7. I mean, that's not all. Obviously, it's going to be very helpful for, like, Benny, of course. And, well, Royal Milk can definitely slow two people uh -oh. down. Oh, the yeah, I'm offended comes through, but look, he's going to get hit by the initial snare. They pull away, and look, tries his best. Oh, Spirit Destruction! Oh, the one that's inside! He might be able to win this 1v1, even with the heal coming in from Florin. It might just be too much. He's out of position. Gets, to, uh, tries to regroup for the rest of his team, but it's too late. The Netherrealm is not going to let him find it. Kel BJ trying to turn it around as E1 is out of position. Forced to walk back into the Y brush. God Yang can really take his time. Benny is sustaining through so much pain. And even for VX7, he's just waiting to slowly encroach upon their positions it's now they're all running away there's nothing that they can do as they get picked off one by one the slow march by falcon esports allowed for two i'm offended two i'm offended to go off cooldown and can continue the assault eight to six now another swing of the pendulum towards the burmese oh, now no. up by a thousand they're looking for a penetration i think they're gonna get it yeah they're going to get this dude oh, is oh. Hey, hello hello why are we not taking out free inhibitors here as the eternal guard comes down four Forcing the rest of FCON to start taking away oh. tier twos. No. SOD. He wouldn't. He wouldn't. There's He's a retribution. Already, he I wouldn't. mean, there's, there's retribution no? and also the last time he tried to 1v1, it didn't go well because of Kid X. All right. Good rewind. Let's go back maybe 20, 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. A nanosecond of hesitation. 
of speculation on Long. I, I'm not so sure if, if, if Moscow Mainz will question me on this when I say maybe Long could have leaned hard on that engage. Oh. Maybe that would have won him the fight against Dax and would have killed Dax even before this all went down. I don't think so. I think that the heal coming in from Kid X was just a little too big, right? I, I think if you take out the heal, 100% he kills him there, right? I think the only other advantage he could find is if he decided to switch out that Purify for maybe an Inspire. Maybe it would have ended the fight almost <laughs> yeah. single-handedly, but that would make him more vulnerable. Now, the Lord jumping in, crashing through the top. Oh, and a big up offended! Fights to in to the Eternal Guard, and then straight away into the Nether Realm to try and peel some time. With the Lord already knocking at their base, they should be able to get one more inhibitor before they try and close things out. But that's a lot of resources and a dead jungler Woo! and a knockback of a lifetime. Long, this is why he's the international marksman. Turns in around single-handedly. <laughs> God Yang with a God Mode Earth Shatter, and they equalize XYG. No. Almost no. as SOD to the back. He wants to go for more. He's already locked down, but it looks like he bit off more than he could chew. That's going to be a two for two trade at the very end of it. But man, I'm telling you, this fleeting time on Kid X, the heals with his alt and Gelvy J, hello. Yeah. He's gonna make it out. He's not gonna make it out of this. He's not gonna make it out of this. No, no, not when CC gets the alt back up. Zed is already here to start peeling him off. Eternal Guard actually towards px 7 side, forcing the Nether Realm to come on out. Target acquisition looking a little disorientated from XYG. I get it. It's sensory overload. Falcon Esports are doing so much on so many different fronts. The Lord, that push in mid, up top. A fight on many different uh, angles coming in, especially now that the lead is the biggest it's ever been. A quick look once more on the attempted clapback. They don't even get PX7 because, again, they didn't know that the uh, cooldown off of the Nether Realm would have been done by then. And now, 5K, approaching 5K. Falcony Sports is after a punish in mid, they win a fight down bottom. I think Falcon Esports are approaching their power spike right now. This is where in, mm -hmm. even if, even if God Yang gets a good CC on two or three, Falcon Esports, their right-click potential, their auto attacks are just going to get so much better from now on. I mean, they, they're going to have a lot of value in this, right? That's why Falcon Esports have to be very precise, right? They got Drop Pod in at the right time and catch as many of the right people. And ideally, that would be Lung plus one. And that could be anybody, really. And I think that if they're going to find Lung, he's going to have to make a mistake because I think that XYG can really take their time with a lot of these plays. But maybe the decision-making when it comes to those moment-to-moment, -moment, like even the replay we saw earlier, right? There was a good opportunity for Zed to actually lock down PX7 to guarantee the kill. Uh-huh. But then again, PX7 is sitting clean and pretty on the Purify. Mm -hmm. So I think that's something that Shanyu Gaming have to think about when they make these big engages. They sense it. They hear it. The Lord is being worked on, approaching a third of its health. Zed up in the front lines, long keeping his distance. I mean, they've got to walk up here, right? I mean, the waves may not necessarily be in their favor, but I think for Falcon, uh, Falcon Esports, they can really, really just uh, let it go back and forth. They got to reset it fully, though. Uh-huh. Not a good look. Not for XYG. Oh. Here we go. I'm offended. He comes on four, pulls Zed backwards, hit by the Earth Shatter, onwards as well, locked two, and now the back line. Royal Book has already fired Zed, but with the Vengeance, he's able to tank a little bit longer than he should. It's the help of the Nether Realm. They're falling into this choke point mistake once more. They've learned it, but the damage has been done. And now it's back to regular programming as Falcony Sports gonna go for this Lord, unhindered, unbothered. You went in the back, long as well. The retribution by Dax. Well, we're seeing the difference here. Lung is going to try and 1v4 this, but I mean, look at that. PX7 single handedly just blowing them up. God Yang does find the trade backwards on towards it, but man, they got to be uh -oh. super. No, no, Dax, Dax, he's in some trouble. Kid X might have to sacrifice his life in favor for Dax, but he's going to stay nearby, get the heals down, try to turn it around, get him low enough, look for the opportunity as Dax finds it. Nether Realm to ensure that this primal wrath is worthless. God Yang should be going down, and now with a exposed crystal, FK. Look at to close things out. They smell the blood in the water as they go in. Zed at half health. The Black Dagger from a kill, BJ. It's done. It's over. They've cracked open the crystal. These fights, they need to be decisive. And it's not even about the macro decision making. It's about target acquisition. I agree, Gideon. I agree more than ever. I'd say of the 
dozens of games we've played in the group stage, this might be one of the most micro-specific matchups we've seen. I totally agree with you. I think that XYG, they definitely got, they definitely have the micro, but they gotta come with each other how they're going to do it rather than just feel it. Close calls on many different fronts. Moments wherein they should have made the call and maybe they shouldn't have made the call. I wonder what our analysts think about this because there's a lot of breakdown here. It was a uh, medium-sized match, but I'm sure there are plenty of pain points that they should be talking about. LaFell, nice and wolf. Hey, tell us what you think. Well, what we think is that you guys are correct. This game is really about the mechanics. Like we're looking at the highlights here. A lot of time we see Benny actually catching out of Frederick, causing the match to go to their side, but can I just say, like, every single time I watch the play, I'm like, no! <laughs> no! Like, I think that was all of us, man. No, why? It's like he's his worst enemy. I I, but then again, you have to give credit to FCON. Yeah. Three comeback games so far. Are the new comeback kings? Is it, is, it might be. is it really a comeback when they plan for it? Well, hey, the lineup that they had... <laughs> this, you know, we talked about, like, extending team fights because yep. of the Nether Realm plus the heals from the Florin. This was the perfect picture of yep. that idea. And, um, you know, I I kind of, I will uh, indulge in what you just said, Mr. Okay. LaFell. Okay. Is this a uh, part of the FCOL plan all along? Well, one thing that I can say is that their composition is very <laughs> dependent on the late game, right? So it looks like it is good in the early game because you have the uh, Ruby as well as the... Yeah as the uh, Faramis, but this is a Ruby in the gold lane, which kind of needs farm. You have the CC also farm dependent, and Florian just is weak in the first two turtles of the game. Let me just say, this draft is nothing new for Falcon, because in the Snapdragon Pro Series, Royal Milk, whenever it's up, he will go for the CC. Yeah. Doesn't matter what other S tier picks is available, he'll go for the CC. PX7 on this Faramis is almost an auto win. So I kind of feel like for XYG, they gotta look, they gotta look at the draft because Look, to his credit, Luke dealt the Luke most did a lot. He did a lot. But I will say he did a lot, but sometimes he was too forward. Too, too forward and a little Ooh. bit too trigger happy on the spirit of destruction, man. Because I think every single time we saw that fly, we're like, don't yeah. do it, right? And then the healing comes through. Oh, yeah. What, what if his team is like, please don't hit it? <laughs> I hope the spear Stop. misses. Like, okay. <laughs> let's, let's, you guys are the analysts. Talk us through this. Why did the Moskov go through with the Spirit Instruction, but why did he lose those raids? Um, it's mainly because of the Florin, actually. At this point, I think um, uh, if you think about the the itemization coming up from the Florin, mm -hmm. once the flask is up, which normally yeah. happens if you are quick enough, five minutes maybe, yep. but typically around the eight minute mark. That's like the safest route, which kind of falls on the first Lord. But then again, you're still very weak because you kind of need one more item so that the heals will be actually potent. Now come the 13 minute mark, the first second Lord, that is where the Florin is a threat. Yeah, I, I think the once that Flask of the Oasis comes up, like Wolf mentioned, it just got too much because typically it's just a Florin, but then the Nether Realm on top of it. That's right. So it it allows even more of that extension, more of that sustainability to play a part in these fights. And when you're looking at a lot of these kind of break out, yeah. even though they had damage, they just didn't have enough to overload. And there were some good moments there, some good yeah. setup potential like we talked about. They had a ton of crowd control available to them. A godlike set from God Yang back in the base. I know the casters mentioned this, but that's the thing. Even with that, they just didn't have enough firepower to get through all that. Oh. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, that is uh, going to be the case. And unless, of course, they kind of dialed in on just literally one hero. Yeah. Uh, that is uh, going to be possible. But then, uh, unfortunately, for the Moskov, it's not, it's not much of a burst hero. Maybe if you get the right combo, it can deal a lot of damage. But it's not like burst burst, which burst burst, you know? Which means that sustain normally is the counter to the Moskov, right? The sustain when it comes to like big heals, because that means that your initial um, spree of big attack speed yeah. is not, uh, is totally going to be nullified. Yeah. 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 Honestly, I feel like, I mean, looking at this, Royal Milk, he looks pretty chill with, with all things considered. Actually, the entire team of Falcon, it, it shows that this is a good win, but at the same time, they don't want to overextend, right? They don't want to be too excited because this is a best of two. And we got to talk about this. If they win this one against XYG, doesn't this mean that they're automatically qualified to the knockout stage? 
Right? They already have they, a 2-0 against E9. Yeah, they would have 4-0, right? They will 4-0. I think they're automatic qualified unless there is that crazy three. Of course. Uh, of but course. then again, if they win a big... Well, technically, they don't win fast. So they might not get the better end of the... Uh, the tiebreaker. Of the tiebreakers. Yeah. But uh, for all intents and purposes, yeah, they're 70% uh, into the knockout stages if they do win a 2-0. That's big. You know what? Here's the thing, <laughs> Wolf. I, I feel like a lot went down in that game. So yeah. this is a special segment for Wolf. Let's actually check out the talent stream Woo! to show it. us what happened in the game. Well, you were wondering why uh, Mr. Long was very confident in many cases. This was one of the first few stumbles. And maybe you're not seeing this. And I'm going to kind of zoom in on this part. You can see. Whoa. So that is oh. the wind of nature. Actually, first pick by Long. That is why he felt very confident. So if you play this out, now he... To, to be fair, he lands great um, Spheres of Destruction. He's going to hit it this time against Nax. And you're going to see it right there. He's trying to kind of duel, but then the Bloom comes up. And now you don't have your attack speed boost anymore. You're kind of controlled by the Curtain Call that actually was landed by Royal Mix. So even when that was a single hero uh, single hero um, Curtain Call, it was still potent enough that you kind of lock long in place. And the thing with uh, Moscow is that you have to be long in place. Now, this is where the problem starts for XYG. They don't have the damage anymore. Royal Milk is just outplaying them up top. As you can see, they're just baiting everyone. Like, everybody's just very low from the side of FCON, but they're not dying. And now, the sustain comes through. Kidex is gonna be landing all of those heals greatly, and then Royal Milk is just, you know, <laughs> he's just fighting fighting against everyone and surviving all time. At this point, no more spells, no more skills, no more firepower for XYG. It's checkmate. The kiting coming up from FCON is just phenomenal. The thing that, that surprised me was in in one frame of your tele uh, teleprompter telestrator telestrator we saw like two curtain calls yeah two. right one on the moscow and then one on the edith as well as the frederick like yeah. that's how that's how prolonged the fight was when exactly you're all you're able to use your alt twice yeah hey we said this in the draft like we knew this was gonna happen you know and yeah. that's playing the lineup to the T. They knew the game plan. They brought it out when, especially when you have an aggressive decision from the opposing team here, from XYG, you guys know if we just make it through this initial burst, yeah, we're fine. Exactly. Because exactly. we can actually turn it, turn the table and then just run yeah. it down. Honestly, with that, we got to look at our Sony match MVP. Well, Sony MVP of the game. It's going to be Kid X. And Kid X, as to what you guys are talking about, is the reason why they don't get bursted down. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, it was struggle. By the way, Kid X is going to have a great time in the area. Seven minutes in, he's going to get a kill on too long. And then uh, that, that really just ramps up and, you know, speeds up the process for the Florin. And to be fair, after dying uh, twice, oh, actually, he oh, de never died, actually. Yeah. Kidex never died. So after the uh, early stages of the game, he was uh, untagged. Wow. 15 KDA, 100% kill wow. participation. Talk about the Florin. On a Florin. On a Florin. My goodness. Yeah. I, I've, I've never seen a scarier Florin in my life. Yep. Look at the Florin. You'll you be, you be thinking, like, she's harmless, but like, ah, yeah. oh, dude, dude, dude. 15%. Um, none of those uh, tempo rain Florin shenanigans going yeah, in for no. the focus. Mark, hey, which know. yeah, yeah, that's actually good. But you saw, you saw there was a uh, clash in the middle where uh, they were able to just literally one shot long with just one lichen pounce yeah. coming out from uh, a from a lot That is a lot of damage coming off of the items. I know what you're gonna say. What am I gonna say? War cry, war cry, and and focusing mark. Exactly. Boom, boom. Big percentage. Big damn, as this guy would say. <laughs> Big. Damn, and with that being said, we have a special interview with Falcons. So before we go to the next match, let's check it out. Uh, hello, I am Ryan May from Falcon Esports, and I play ASP. เอ่อจนเราอันนี้เนี่ยที่ตบบาดีเปิ้ลมากองโนเทรนเนี่ยเทรนมาจนเราดีออฟฟิเชียลเปิ้ลนายอ่ะจูซ่าเกะอ่า
ti apa ni, ti ber, asyik apa ni malu ni, no, kelau naya ku, kelau naya ye, no, malu tu kelau naya tu lu, tak malu ni, naya macam ni, ada, biar jono tu lu yai jero, keep watching everybody. Something about Royal Milk, the teams that he said, it's not doing well. I like Fnatic Onyx, you know, and it's like, oh, I like Cloud9. I want to beat them. Well, they, they, he got what he wished for. Yeah. Uh, I'm <laughs> Is he a, a seer? Lot of, yeah, he <laughs> might be. He might be able to tell the future. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the thing is, uh, maybe he has a curse. Maybe. I'm just surprised with how many, many times Cloud9, uh, Cloud9's name comes up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Shows us that they're a, they're a team to watch out for. But then again, uh, Falcon, they have already overcame that hurdle. Now they're just one win away from securing the knockout stage's berth. Well, 70%, I would say. Yeah. 70% is good enough, don't you? Yeah, that's uh, nice. Yeah. 70% is good. Yep. Uh, and, you know, I think even with how things are going to kind of like fall into place here with Group D, if they get the sweep here, that's ga that's great for Falcon Esports because from that interview, you heard it, right, from Royal Milk, that their preparations leading to this, they don't have as many, I would say, opportunities as other regions here. They really do compete in these third-party tournaments. They, they use that as their practice. And then eventually when they get the chance to scrim and everything else, look what they bring to the table. Yeah, yeah now we're jumping straight into the pick and bans here. Falcon's going to be blue side, XYG is going to be red side. And again, the Luyi gets banned, but... I, I'm kind of on the cam for Falcons. Like, don't change it up. What, what, yeah. what has worked before, just keep using it. They, they used it from the Snapdragon Pro Series up until MSC. And until someone stops it, yeah. might as well just use the same thing. But what, what do you guys think? I think that, yes, super duper agree with that. Especially because we know that XRG might also do the same thing. This Yuzhan pick, although it is not the most optimal optimal pick, especially because there's Florid, there's Firemis. Um, or well, they did not see the floor prior to the usual pick, but it's more of a comfort kind of pick. Like, it doesn't have an actual combo with the Frederin. Um, um, imagine if they picked up somewhere along the lines of uh, Lapu Lapu, for example, they mm. will have the yeah. first yep. to go with the mask up. But that is, that tells me it's comfort pick. That's also is the same with Frederin, although Frederin works versus the Roger. This is Faramis plus Ruby, which Frederin actually hates playing at. So, what I'm trying to get at is. XYG is playing around their comfort heroes, so FCON should also be playing on their comfort heroes. Yeah, so honestly, nicely looking at this match here. Falcons, they've been, they're betting out the Moskov, so even though, yes, they won against it, but they're still respecting Long having the highest damage and the highest goal in that game. Yeah. Interesting that they uh, go that route. It makes me wonder if we're still possibly going to see a Florin come up. It was such a detrimental yeah. uh, part of the lineup here that we saw utilized. Also, the Faramis is still open. Yep. So those are two heroes that could still play a big role in actually either of the teams that signed to go this way. Yep. But because of the first pick is going to be up for grabs. Harith maybe Harith? is... Uh, I mean, yeah, oh, very, nice. is. very natural, actually. And then you answered this typically with uh, Roger, but uh, yeah, Roger is available. Yeah, maybe XYG. Uh, Roger Valen. Roger Valen looks really good. Another hero is the Fredrin, which in this case now is a legitimate answer to the Harith and XYG showed us that they are not gonna think twice about picking that hero up. Picking up both Rogers was Fredrin is not that good because you can reveal a lot. So maybe Edith plus oh. Fredrin, oh. perhaps. There it is. There it is. Wolf Wolf always on point. <laughs> it's, he's good. I, I, I'm sure that his glasses has screens inside of it. <laughs> that he, he has like 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 five <laughs> seconds ahead or something. I'll yeah. say that you know so far through the group stage, I don't know what Wolf's percentage is, but he's pretty on point. And 120 percent. Thank you. 120 percent. Yeah. 120. Thank you. Like I said, 120 percent. 120. Wow. Like meaning, meaning, meaning to say. The draft that he got wrong, he was right. He was just right too fast. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's going to be in a knockout stage. So he was drafting for <laughs> that one. I take, I take that. I take that. <laughs> yeah, so now for, for That's Falcon. enough for me. Do you get the Ruby or the CC now? I think uh, CC. Oh, Roger, obviously. Roger Farmers. Farmers still Farmers. open. Oh, Is this. I, I hope I hope XYG picks up the Valentina because now they have uh, access to the Fermis. Nether Realm, yeah. Nether Realm Fredrin is great, and it's great versus the Roger as well, right? That's because true. Roger wa don't, Roger hates playing against the Fermis. I think I, I think part of the part of the problem 
the last game was they locked in the Fredrin early. Yeah, I like agree. they I didn't agree. have to pick it up that to that yeah. last pick of the first phase. <gasps> oh, whoa! This is whoa. Oh, interesting. I, I mean, whoa! Talk about early, right? Talk about early. Like yeah. you would not assume Bruno getting banned in the second ban yeah. phase. You oh don't, you don't expect man! It, right. So now I'm guessing. Oh man! I'm, I'm still saying the same thing from the last game. I'm surprised with their last pick for the oh, first man. phase. Same thing for this. No, no, this no. Is... No, I feel like because you you said that, it's like, you know what? Hold What's my coffee. <laughs> no, hold my rock star. Oh. Let me show hold my rock star. Let me, my let, Pepsi. Me, let me let me let me show you my third oh. pick. All right. Oh man. This I, is... I wonder how the casters are reacting. You know. I am confusion. You're, yes. You did, you did say that's going to be the, the theme for today. The theme for today. Today is going to be confused wolf, but yeah. <laughs> let's jump back into the draft here. Yeah. Raz getting banned now. We have to consider that the Valentina should be banned here, right? It has to be. Yeah, it has, it to, has be. to be. It's great. Oh, man. The XYG. There it oh, is. Oh, my goodness. This is absolutely a mistake. I, I would say this is a, you know, when you're, when you're playing chess and then there's a game review where it's like a blunder or something. Yeah. This is definitely a blunder from XYG because uh, surely I understand why the Bruno will be picked up. And like I said, FCON might not even be thinking about the, the Bruno. The slot where the Bruno was picked. I mean, who like who would you think? <laughs> Carrie, Claude, Beatrix, Natan. There's, like, there's, like, uh, there's uh, five more marksmen that you'll think about before you get into the Bruno. You, you, the you, Bruno. you would consider Ruby before Bruno. And that's also true. Oh, man. Because <laughs> especially against, I mean, the Harith. Yeah, exactly. Especially like, against the Harith. Like, early game, yeah. yeah, sure. Like, first two minutes of the game. But Level I, one yeah. is great for Bruno. Yeah. But the, once the Zaman Force especially comes up, yeah. how do you play against that? And uh, two minutes and, go by fast. Yeah. And the Faram is ult as well. Freya banned again. But at least oh this time, the CC God. got banned. Now, here's the thing. Royal Milk, if he doesn't get a CC, he has one more hero. And that's the Yuzhong. Yuzhong. So that means that the XYG might be pressed to pick up the Yuzhong now, which then reveals the Edith. Oh, my God. This is literally the same as that. I would say just pick up Lapu Lapu. I think it's much better. Give up the Yuzhong. You're pretty much set for that. Maybe... So, you uh, your mage now or something? Uh, yeah. Maybe just go Vexana again. Vexana. I don't know. They don't have that many options when you look at this. Valentina, was Aurora? Novaria. Aurora? Or Aurora's perfect versus yeah. both Roger as well as the Aerith. That's great. I want to see your depth. I mean, if this if this is elimination game for you, just... You pick up the Bruno anyways. What's another crazy pick, right? Yuzhong. So, yeah, they indeed got pressed to pick up the Yuzhong. Yep. All right, that's, that's, oh, that's what man. we expected. Oh, man. Oh, man. The question is, what does Royal Mill pick up now? Because uh, the type of guy is, this, you know, the farming kind of heroes, or we're looking at the Bandetta, the Paquito. Yeah, Bandetta is great. Maybe even the Lapu. Paquito is also amazing. I think um, you... I'm thinking Grok actually for FCON, but at the same time, I love the Lolita. It's great versus the Bruno, decent versus the Edith. Uh, Ruby is also one of those heroes that uh, Frederick doesn't like to play against. How about going back to the. Carb oh, yeah, there you oh. go. The Minotaur and the Ruby. Minotaur plus. Woo! Dude. This is difficult. <laughs> Long team fights, right? Long team fight still oh, because man. there's still some healing. Yeah, oh, man. From the Minotaur. Go Odette, pick up the Winter Crown. You're not that scared about the Minotaur Fury as well as the Ruby. That's the only option here. Otherwise, you're pressed to go Vexana. You're saying that because they need the damage? Yes. They need tons of damage. damage. So it's not about crowd control here. It's not about. You know, uh, like lords. No, come you, on. You, you need, you need, you need a swan song. You need a swan song because how much damage does Worldy do? Uh, not that much. Not that much. Not that much. Yeah, no. actually, some you know, Benny Cutie just uses it for the stacks. Actually, the stacks. Yep. Yeah. Oof. This tough decision. What is it going to oh, be? Navaria. Navaria. We did okay. say that Navaria can be picked up. It does have damage, but then you have to scale up. You need some items. You need you need a few other things for them to work out. So, oh man, for the casters, let you guys know the draft has finished, and I'm pretty sure you guys heard our analysts, their opinions on the draft. We're gonna throw it to you guys fast, give you guys a little bit of time to digest. But what do you guys think about the draft? We're throwing it over to you. I want to catch it real fast, just as well. It's very rare that clearly, literally. 
An analyst says, yo, that might have been a blunder right there. Hey, man, if Lung hard carries this game 1v5, it's a blunder no longer. And I think that's what we're hoping to see here, whether he actually qualifies for that slot. Can he truly 1v5 against a double sustained composition that has a Farmist and a Minotaur? Good luck. And this is indeed a debut Bruno pick in the group stage of MSC 2024. And there's a reason why they call him the international marksman. It's because he's one of the carries for his team. So if by any chance we don't have the comms, but we can only assume, hey, coach, give me that. Give me that, Bruno. Then this could be one of their only ways that they see they can take down Falcon. I, I, I don't know. I like double insurance policies, right? I, I think that Ewan could have gone for the Vixana if he wanted to. I would have much preferred the Farsa. Wow, he just ate that. He, just, he, he walked just up did. and just ate that. In astral form, too. <laughs> oh, boy. That's interesting. Don't see that happen very often. But overall, I do agree with the analysts. I do think it might have been a little bit of a blunder. So I'm hoping that Lung really shows up here. And he's going for Master Assassin. So I'm glad that he's trying to win his lane. Uh-huh. Uh, checking in again. Ooh, it's a good amount of CC from KidX again. Uh, that's how you build Bruno, folks. If you want to try Bruno, if it works out, then you double down on it. Uh, interesting to see that Falcon Esports still committing onto that Ruby. They really like the Ruby. Yeah, they do quite like the Ruby. I mean, it's all about sustain, right? CC, Ruby generally does the same thing. You're looking for that pick in that back line. You're trying to clump them up as much as possible. And then you just, instead of like raw tanking it, you just have enough spell bank, uh, spell vamp to keep yourself alive. And I think that oh. for now, Dax, I mean, not going to find that first blood just yet. But it looks like the mid duo is really struggling here from XYG. Uh-huh. Up top, you, you do see these two gold laners taking their time. Uh, not much of action just yet between Benny and Lung. Kill VJ dueling against these two. And he does trigger the Shaw Essence there. Royal Milk gonna wail away. Get some gold from this tier one down bottom. Really good read coming in from XYG. They respond to the potential dive here. And uh, KLVJ honestly doesn't take too much damage. His team bails him out of that situation. And if they can find PX7 here, that would be the most ideal just before he hits level four. You can feel the urgency Wait, of what? these mid laners. They want to go and get that level four sooner, Kale. Huh? I mean, Kale's in a lot of trouble here. At this point, he's not going to have enough life to even use the Black Dragon form. Uh, and then the Flicker Force oh! from Royal Milk into the Abbey Fender to find First Blood. That's great, but he wants that level four. But no Fury already comes out from the side of Kid X, and they've already found a god. Young Zed is going to be the next to fall. No like in Pound reset from Dax, unfortunately. Walks away with one HP and a dream. XYG facing. The wrath of Falcon Esports. They didn't expect for them to be this aggressive. And now look, Dax attempting Grand Theft Purple. Can they get it? Does have a retribution. Oh yeah, Petrify has already come out as well. KLVJ quickly into the Black Dragon form to get himself out of there. And this is why the double sustain is annoying, right? PX7 just bails them out when things get really tight. That's it, Dax has one star now. Mm -hmm. He committed Grand Theft Purple successfully. Got away with it too, with impunity. Same story still up top. Uh, Gold-wise, uh, that is Falcony Sports up by, wow, a whopping 2,000 gold already. Two kills, a turtle, and I wonder how much of that is on Benny. Mm, well, let's here have a go. look here. Wow, 500. Oh, okay. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. Trickle-down economy. It is, a, it is a trickle-down effect, right? And you can see that, like, every single motions on the map have costed them something. Even for PX7, he is quite significantly ahead against E1. He's two levels up on E1 right now. And all because a bad turtle fight, and more importantly, didn't hit level 4 on time by the EXP lane. Mm -hmm. The EXP lane skirmish really benefited Falcon Esports, and I'm pretty sure that was to plan. That was on purpose. And now they're going to continue to pressure top lane this time around because this buys Falcon Esports more room to rotate. Uh, they can try and engage. And if anything, they can do it on two fronts. Look, down bottom. Okay, LBJ is going to get hit by Lycan like Pouch. Shot Residue procs Petrify as well to make sure that Dax has no insurance policy to find the oh. kill. Astro Echo. Ooh, skill shot right direction. Not enough range. That was close. That was close. Maybe about an inch or two from death. Dax was going to be able to regenerate off these little minions, these creeps near the turtle. Spawning in about 10 seconds now as Falcon Esports alights from that top lane pressure. They're going to go ahead and go for this turtle now. I'm curious. I would like to check in with Lung here. How is he doing in his lane? Because he's been left on an island for quite some time and it looks like he, uh, I mean, previously he was leveled down on Benny, but that's because the wave was pushing in. But let's look at the turtle for now. Black Dragon form already out for KLVJ, but no one's furious.
follow it up, and it looks like, nah, Dax is going to be able to get the Retribution, no problem, with Zed as a consolation prize. It's pretty impossible for XYG to walk in like that, right? I mean, with the Mignolan Fury alone, is a big issue. Well, fool me once, shame on me, fool me twice. Well, shame on me still. I think the <laughs> other one goes the other way. I think, <laughs> shame on you. But yeah, no, I think this should be the last straw for XYG. Maybe they'll face him up front. The Chiao's gonna go down here. Unless... Oh! What? Ah, oh, he walked out of it! He walked out of range and ended up dying! <laughs> I'll count that as an outplay. The king oh. does it. I'll count it as an outplay. All that right. was a 3v1. <laughs> there was no... <laughs> Reason for him to do that. Look at, let's watch it again. <laughs> look at Dax. Just look at Dax. You can see the range of PX7's Nether Realm, right? And Dax just so happens to walk out of it and gets tapped by the shot. <laughs> it was the Shah, and right out of range too. <laughs> Shah has larger range than Nether Realm. Oh, so Can't funny. Confirm, no, that's mechanics. Dude, that's so funny. Oh, man. I mean, Dax is probably like, ah, it's not the biggest deal in the world. A little sad, of course. Yeah. But let's look at the item build. Because right now, I think that... Oh, man. Zed, he is he is greedy. A brute force breastplate first item to be able to not only run away from his opponents, but if XYG can turn things around, he's going to be running at his opponents. <sighs> it's tough because, again, Falcon Esports has multiple damage sources. Uh, very different in uh, nature, too. There's physical. There's magic. And by getting Brute Force, I guess that's the most economic way of him getting both. It's hybrid and again, less CC. So you're looking at less from the Minoan Fury, less from the Pull, uh, less from the Hook from Royal Milk. So I get it, I understand, uh, but it is a little greedy. I do agree. Now in mid, Royal Milk dancing around two. Their comp is so unkillable. I mean, just look, look at how minimal damage they're doing to him. And like, even, even if he does take the damage, he just walks down to the bot side of the map, heals back up to full, comes back to the, it comes back to the neutral, and it's just like, I don't need a recall, ever. I'm good. Let's go. Turtle, here, started up by Dax. He'll be watching from the bush. Eight. River control in. Oh, what, 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 what? And then Zed gets pulled in. What's going on now? The interception from Falcon Esports. XYG just let it happen. They just turned a blind eye to it. Less of an intersection. I think Zed was just going the wrong way. Zed was just walking in, assuming he wouldn't get punished. <laughs> I mean, he, wanted, he flickered out of there. Uh, I. I think they didn't read the situation right. That's the only way that I, we can explain this. You can almost see it in Zed's face. Like, how could I have let that happen? <laughs> how could I have walked into Falcon Esports crosshairs like that? Oh, oh that's such a feels bad for XYG. And I mean, now with the lead and momentum that Falcon Esports has, you can definitely tell from where they come from, their region, they get real aggressive when they have that lead. And now... They're the ones facing this kind of aggression. Again, folks, as a recap, in the finals of the China qualifiers, XYG swept their opponents. XYG swept KBG. So this here, this is the other side of the coin for them. Now Royal Milk, 3v1. Oh, Royal Milk. Oh, saved by PX7. Oh, Royal Milk, he almost made the mistake. Oh, nearly walking out of it before the projectile connected. I, again, this is the beauty of the double sustain comp coming in from Falcon Esports. They love doing this, right? They love having the Nether Realm. They love having uh, motivational roar. It could be switched out for Florence. Do it doesn't really matter as long as you sustain. And even without those supports, all of them have some level of sustain. Benny with the shields, mm -hmm. Dax with the lifesteal, Royal Milk with the ungodly amount of lifesteal and spell vamp as well. Five to one, 6k gold lead ahead for Falcon Esports. XYG is going to struggle oh. to keep this turret. Uh, I oh. mean, they can fight if they want to, but they find the I'm offended flicker backwards, and it's too late. The Minion Fury stops any aggression from XYG, and even KLBJ, he hunkered around for a little too long, and the Nether Realm is going to keep everybody alive. How many chain kills can you get? And it looks like XYG admit, okay, we're only giving you two. We can't give you any more, man. Uncle, I call Uncle, and they back off. Oh, They're no. eventually going to get the orange and that turret up top that they started. Odd how mid lane tier one hasn't been touched. Look, now just eventually they'll push. Oh, I, it's... I don't know. I don't know what to feel about this game. I feel like XYG are playing that well this time around in game number two. I think they did much better in game number one. Something in game number one broke them. I think it, oh. something must have snapped. Something changed because now XYG, they're, they've been playing on the back foot since 
minute one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There were small outplays, small little mechanical, uh, you know, double two steps here, but Falcon Sports have been calling the shots. They, they, they've, they've been setting the tempo and the pace, and XYG aren't ready to dance. Yeah, it, it's so true. I mean, let's look at the items first before we continue the subject, right? Because uh, now we finally see fully completed boots from Lung. He was greeting out with the Haas Claw into the Berserker's Fury, and I think he's going to go into the Malefic Roar as his third, but it, it's kind of late now that Benny has the Holy Crystal, so he still can't win that 1v1 if given the chance. Yep, and the Radiant Armor and God Yang and Zed, sure, it'll help you from PX7 and Benny, but what about Dax and Royal Milk. Now that Dax is the endless battle too, you're playing with true damage. Uh, it's a little tough here, but let's see whether an inhibitor falls, right? They've got synchronized waves. They're all pushing at the same time. It's really stretching out XYG and E1. He's so low. Look, he's already down 50%. Here comes the Black Dragon farm because KLBJ needs to force them away to protect these inhibitors. They don't want Checkmate Angle this early on into the game, but Falcons, one last wave up on that top side and maybe cracks it open. Yes, gets it open just in time. And now they back away. Checkmate angle set up. All according to plan. About two minutes until another Lord comes through with a contest from XYG far from the horizon. They can't even think of defending uh, here because they have oh. to watch out. Oh. You can engage. Uh, I, I mean, God, yeah, he tries to get on out of there with the primal wrap. Ends up getting punished too with the I'm offended. And that's going to be GG well played as FCON 1 has just landed. The crystal going to get cracked open after Dax gets the Maniac. El Falcon Esports does it again. Both teams tried to draft as close a lineup to as they did in game one. And eventually, it's Falcon's aggression. What we were expecting from the early moments of game one that won them through. This is the Falcon we know. I mean, you guys